Yeah. It's good shit talk music. I like it. Does <laughs> anybody else listen to the show Have to Poop? I'm like, I feel like the whole time I'm like, don't think about pooping. It's making me want to poop a whole bunch. Yeah, right? Who said that? Somebody just let out like a yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, poop queen. I like how everybody thought they were okay with shit stories and then Carrie came out with an anal fish chill story and you're like, oh, we're not okay with this. <laughs> we came strictly for poop on pants, no extras. <laughs> Fucking give the show a round of applause, this is amazing. How incredible is this that we're on a Friday night in a well-attended show just to hear people talking about shit in their pants? <laughs> Fucking take that, Al-Qaeda. <laughs> That's why they hate our freedom. They see our, our pants shitting shows and they can't stand it. I actually got very nervous for the show because I, uh, I've shit my pants so many times that I'm like, I don't, what is the, what's gonna be the one story? What's the one story that's gonna matter tonight? I'm gonna try. I actually, I was thinking about this, I actually shit my pants way less since I moved to Manhattan. And, uh, cause I realized I used to, if you party in Manhattan and then you live in deep in Brooklyn, there are repercussions. <laughs> right? That weekend service schedule is not always to your benefit. <laughs> I mean, th there was like one, uh, there was one really bad time that it was like, oh, I'm just gonna go to a boozy crawfish cookout in Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> hot, hot day. <laughs> Hot day and seafood, a lot of booze. And that is, that is how you run into a fine, that's when you learn about fine fair bathrooms. I don't know if you guys know this or a great fair. You can use a supermarket bathroom. The question is, can you make it there? It's in the back and it's in row G. Do you have enough presence of mind to know where row G is? Probably fucking not. It's, I've had such a poop uh, pants evolution I was thinking about this, the first time I shit my pants, uh, oh, by the way, in every story, at no point, I've never shit my pants sober. These are, I, it's clearly <laughs> just a reflection of my horrible drinking problem. And the first time I shit my pants, I was so embarrassed that I threw my underwear in my neighbor's garbage. <laughs> That's like, not my shit, not my pants. If the cops asked, I wasn't even in New York City that day. <laughs> But there's so much in between, there's like crazy, I actually went, I mean, I have so much, so many poop uh, related incidents in my life. I went to jail actually for putting poop in someone's face, which was a, a lengthy discussion about how I was not trying to use a chemical weapon. I just really hated somebody and I understand that's off-putting, but I'm a decent person. Um, but I wanted to focus on is the most recent time I've shit my pants, which was two years ago. It's feel good about living in Manhattan. Got a little overconfident. Just drinking in Midtown, already a mistake. And I have to walk to the F train, it's on 6th Avenue. I was like coming from like 3rd Avenue. I get to Bryant Park and the, um, the turtle starts poking. Head out the, coming out the shell a little bit. And I'm like, okay, I can do this. I can handle this, I'm in Midtown Manhattan. It's 4 a.m. If it's Manhattan, something's got to be open. Nothing's open in fucking around Bryant Park. And I was like, so I immediately start heading back to the bar I was drinking at. And then I'm doing like the butt whack-a-mole where I'm like, turtle wants out, turtle goes back in. Turtle wants out, turtle wants out. Go, go in your, go to your home, turtle. It's not time for you to come out. But I've been drinking. And so... Like one of those times I'm supposed to say, turtle go back in. In my drunk brain, I'm like, what if we just let the turtle out? No. Yeah. <laughs> it was a horrible mistake, because then the turtle starts coming out, and I'm like, oh, I don't want to poop my pants. This feels terrible. This is a terrible, shameful feeling. So, what remained to the turtle as the turtle goes back in, and I'm now in this insane situation where I have pooped my pants, but I still have a lot more poop to do. In between worlds, if you will. 
a man straddling two dimensions. <laughs> By the way, like, let's let be clear about something. If one molecule of poop touches your pants, you have pooped your pants. <laughs> it's almost like, well, you didn't poop your pants if you still have more poop in your pants. If you had still had to poop more, I'm like, no. Any part of poop touches your pants, you have pooped your pants. Anything that permeates the underwear layer, you have pooped your pants. It's very clear. So it's bad. It feels really uncomfortable. It's, it hurts. And I'm wasting. I have no decision-making abilities at all. And then I still remember how beautiful the light looked. <laughs> because I saw in an old, unused phone booth. I said, yes. This is my salvation. I don't know why I thought that, because they're see-through. <laughs> But at the time, it felt better. I'm like, I'm not a fucking animal that just shits on the street. I go in a phone, I go in a phone booth. I can't tell you how demoralizing it is that you left in the middle of that store. It's, I'm not gonna pretend, I'm not gonna pretend it hurts. It hurts. So I shit. So I get down there and I start shitting in this phone booth. And it feels fucking amazing. Like I'm like, I'm down there so long, like I'm thinking about pulling out my phone. I'm just in this moment, in this beautiful moment, and I stand up and I'm like, I did it. I mean I'm a little gross, but I did it. And then I like I look down and I'm like, motherfucker. Not only did I shit my pants, I shit my socks. <laughs> so this is where 20 years of shitting your pants comes in handy. I'm experienced. It's not my first fucking rodeo. I made a move that I'm so proud of to this day. I said, hey, I got shitty underwear and shitty socks. Some of these things ain't coming home with me. Yeah. Again, still just on 40, 42nd and 6th Avenue, <laughs> middle of the night, and then I, I take off my pants, my underwear, my shoes, and my socks. I'm completely cartoon casual, <laughs> shirt, no pants, in Midtown Manhattan. I was supposed to tell you it didn't feel good. It felt fucking amazing. It is freedom. That is what freedom is. It's also probably what people think right before they get arrested. Anyway. So, I, I, I was like, I'm good. So I take off my, my socks and my underwear, and then I throw them in the phone booth. Which to this day, I think about that someone the next day must have just been walking to work. Because <laughs> it was a weekday, to let you understand about my life. And... Someone must have been walking to work and just seen a pile of shit and a pair of socks. Like, it probably looked like you got, someone got the craziest phone call of their life. Yeah. We're just like Superman made an uh-oh. And uh, so now here's the problem. I feel pretty good. I'm feeling, I've come to my senses. I'm still not home. And I go to use the subway and I'm like, wait a minute. I smell so bad. I can smell me outside. I can't go inside again. And I live way downtown. So I'm like, I don't want to get Uber. I don't want the fucking judgment. And I don't want the rating. I'm not in a position to be rated at the moment. And I think again, this was just so beautiful that I'm like, where can I go to be smelly? I'm like, of course a yellow cab. I'm gonna get it. So I hail a yellow cab, and I, I, I can't imagine the chances of this, but literally, the cab driver smelled terrible, and I smelled terrible. We didn't talk about it. It was the winter, and we just, we just, <laughs> we just took a 30-minute cab drive in the middle of the winter with all the windows down. Yeah. And I said, I tipped him well. He said, have a good night, sir. And I said, to you as well. Yeah.